Dragoli Games has done an excellent job by including Quick Starter Guide in addition to the full rulebook. The main purpose of the Quick Starter Guide is obvious. It gets us to play our first game as soon as possible. I personally like reading rulebooks, the beginning to the end, multiple times because I am always intrigued by gamers' core design. However, even someone like myself, it is hard to hold off the excitement of the first gameplay. There are a few things I wished I had known to even further speed up the first few Arena the Contest play. Here are my tips. Choose PvP versus PvE and only read the corresponding section on the Quick Starter Guide. Unlike some other games, Alina the Contest share majority of the core game rules between PvP and PvE mode. So if you learn one, learning the other is fairly easy process. Having said this, there are still distinct rules between the two, so you need to decide which mode you will be playing first and focus on it. Regardless of which mode you choose, you will still end up reading most of 6 pages long quick starter guide, but you should ignore unrelated sections to reduce the chance of confusion. For example, one of the distinct differences between PvP and PvE is round concept. PvE allows players to have their heroes go back to back and players can choose each round in different orders. This helps synergistic combination to happen much easier than in the PvP mode. Basically, this is an example that the turn rules are different between PvE and PvP mode. So reading the other play mode as a beginner may be a potential source of confusion. If you choose PvE mode, you can ignore reading most of page 2, starting a PvP match section. If you choose PvP mode, you can ignore reading part of a page 2 and the entire page 3 including the sections reading a quest, the foes, and starting a PvE match. Although you want to eventually incorporate all rules of the game for the full game experience of the Arena the Contest, I highly suggest you to start with minimum rule and then take stepwise progressive rule at all approach. This will not only get you started with the game faster without being overwhelmed by the rules, but it also provides you a sense of evolving gameplay. Each game feels fresh of its own due to successfully added game rules. I use this unofficial progressive game rules when I am playing with my 11 years old son. Each game has been very smooth sail without my son having any issue or question about rule during each game. Starter rule contains the bare minimum rule. You ignore reaction attack mechanics, position mechanics, magic items, and first aid. Basic rule as reaction attack mechanics. Without this mechanics, some heroes' passive ability, like ones from tank or bruiser combat roles, lose their half of their efficacy. The third level I call core rule would add position mechanics and first aid. Position mechanics add true tactical element to the movements of heroes. Next, you can add artifacts. This is a way to customize heroes in Arena the Contest, especially in the PvP mode. The last, full roll, you add scrolls. When you add scrolls, you are now experiencing fullness of the Arena the Contest. Scrolls are the cards that are hidden from the opponent players, and these cards can trigger even during opponent's turn. In the card games, these are like trap and counter cards. These add surprise elements to the arena of the contest. Depending on your comfort level, you do not have to take all 5 steps. For example, you can go from starter rule to core rule, then full rule as a 3 step approach. In regards to the first aid, the official rulebook states first aid is a mandatory rule when you are playing co-op. This system allows surviving player's heroes to revive the other player's hero. This way, ones who had lost their heroes do not have to just sit and watch reminder of the game. Having said this, I personally think it is acceptable to ignore first aid rule even on co-op 
as ally quests should be able to complete without losing any hero with proper teamwork. In another word, spend effort and time trying to help all your teammates to survive. Choosing heroes. To familiarize yourself with a role, you might want to choose heroes from one straightforward playstyle combat roles. Amongst the core box included heroes, brute, shooter, hero, and tank are generally straightforward to use. If you have decided to start PvP mode, unless you have 8 players, I'd suggest start out with 3 vs 3. Less heroes means not only faster gameplay, but more chance you can familiarize yourself to the current combatants. So times can be better spent focusing on learning rules rather than individual heroes attacks. Again, reminder here is when you lead quick start guide, you should skip following sections, reading a quest, the foes, starting a PvE match. If you decided to play PvE, start with a standalone quest mode rather than epic campaign. Specifically, you should start with a lava citadel. If you choose PvE, you should skip starting a PvP match section in the quick starter guide. Be sure to read the quest guide carefully. For example, I initially forgot to take orb damage every round. What seems rather minor damage for each round adds up and this rule made the quest entirely different feel. Another tip for beginners is try skip secondary objectives. I have a perfectionist mentality when it comes to a game so I have been trying to achieve all objectives for all quests I have played so far. I have not had a single success. For this, you need not only high level tactics but also proper team party selection. Dragoli Games has done an excellent job writing a rulebook. If you read the book carefully and may need a few times, you will find many questions answered in it. So be sure to use it whenever you have any question. One example you will likely encounter in the first PvE play is the basic strategy of a villain. The quick starter guide is simple and great starting point, but when you start playing the actual game, you will quickly develop multiple questions. The quest golden rule from the full rulebook to me is one of the few ambiguity the rulebook has. This is because one can try to play from the player or villain's perspective while still following all the rules and depending on which side you choose, the difficulty level changes drastically. For example, I take the side of villain when the lowest and the nearest hero to the villain has a damage immunity. If I were controlling villains, they should be smart enough and ignore it and go to the second closest hero. However, if you just stick with the rules, it won't prevent you from having those villains attack damage immune hero, which essentially could null the entire villain round. My personal tip here is because ATC is a challenging game of its own, you should play everything on your favor whenever you get to choose. Using aforementioned example, if I know villains will attack the closest hero even with damage immunity, I can intentionally try placing the hero closest to all villains, which by itself is part of tactics. You can always make the game harder by using hard mode rule, going for secondary objectives, or set your own objective like keep all four heroes survived at the end of the quest. After reading through the full rulebook, you may still have questions. L because you are not certain if your interpretation of a certain rule is correct or not. Fortunately, there is a very active, new user-friendly Discord group for Arena the Contest. You can also try Board Game Geek Forum. The Discord group is more likely to give you faster reply from experienced players. If there is any other tip you wish you had known before playing the first few games, please share in the comment section. Now go enjoy one of the best adventure board game out there.